And what we're going to do for percentages is that there will be four areas that we'll be focusing on. So namely GST, uh, discount, TIP. Now this TIP later I'm going to explain to you what exactly it is. It is a very simple hack for the students to be able to handle percentages questions very easily. And last but not least is this change of base. Okay, so first up, we're going to talk about GST. <laughs> What does GST stand for? It stands for goods and services tax. It is something that you have to pay because you are a Singaporean. In Singapore, right now, it's seven percent. It is going to increase in the future. Okay. Uh, yeah, we do not know how much it is, but nevertheless, as long as you are Singaporean, you need to learn how to calculate GST. Okay. So how do we calculate GST? So at this point of time, GST is only seven percent. We are at seven percent GST. Tell them so, hey, now we're going to calculate GST. Uh, how do we calculate GST? We talk about okay. The cattle cost forty dollars right now. Okay, so uh, what is this? Okay, so this is actually hundred percent. So if you add seven percent GST, how much is it going to be? Okay, so this is the uh, the actually this is the this is the this is the final answer. Okay, so what we want them to do is to be able to calculate if this is forty dollars, and you add seven percent GST, how much is going to be? So the idea is that this cattle at forty dollars is actually one hundred percent. Okay, so because there is a seven percent GST, so you need to calculate what is the seven percent. And how do you calculate seven percent? All you have to do is to take seven over hundred, seven out of one hundred. Okay, multiply with forty dollars. Right, you will realize that. You do some simple cancellation. So 7 times 4 is 28. So 28 divided by 10, there's a 10 over here. Uh, it will be $2.80. So the 7% GST is $2.80. So the question now is, what is the price of the cattle after adding GST? And you can then uh, demonstrate to them. Or you, you, can, you can ask them, you know, like, hey, uh, you know, just pick someone. What's the answer? You know, after adding 7% GST, and uh, some guy will say, ah, oh, yeah, it's $42.80. That's correct. See? Okay, so you do one time of demonstration, and then after that, you get them to do the rest. Simple. Now we are doing the second type of percentage question, which is on discount. So the first question is the one that you have to demonstrate. Now the question is going to look like this. Rice cooker. Uh, now this rice cooker costs $126 after a 30% discount. Okay, so the question is, uh, what is the price of the rice cooker before discount? Okay, what is the price before discount? So this $126 is after discount. Uh, what does this mean? So this is the information that's given to the students and they're supposed to figure out what is the price before discount. So what does this mean? Uh, what you tell them is this. <clears throat> when this is $126 after discount, uh, first of all, what is the amount of discount? The amount of discount is actually 30%. Okay, so 30% discount, uh, what this means is that this one is at 70%. So the $126 is 70%, okay? And the question is asking you to find the 100%, that is the original price of the uh, rice cooker. So how do we do that? Uh, the simple thing is actually to take 100 uh, over 70 times uh, $126. Okay, you do some uh, calculations over here, you will get $180. Okay, so what we are doing here is we are taking 126, we divide by 70 to find 1%, and then we multiply with 100 to find 100%. So now uh, I can, I mean, uh, what, is the, what are the most common questions that, of confusions or problems that students have with regards to this? Uh, number one, they do not know what it means by 30%. They will take this thing, go and uh, you know, divide it by 100, and then multiply with 30, and then after that, they minus this one. Okay, so the discounting, uh, there could be a bit of confusion over there. The second type of confusion that they have is they do not know uh, what's going on over here. Okay, they do not know that this is 70%. And then they do not know that uh, how, how, how do I calculate the 100%. Okay, so this is something that you got to use your uh, expertise, you know, as facilitators, adults, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure you understand what percentage is all about, right? So use your own experience to explain to them how to understand this type of percentage. Questions. 
Okay, so this is the discount part for percentage. We are now at part 3 of the uh, percentage questions and this part focuses on the use of tip. TIP triangle to help you to help the students to understand how to execute and how to do percentage questions. So for TIP, uh, this is the TIP triangle. Now what does it stand for? T stands for total, P stands for the percentage, and I stands it can be it can mean many things. It can be it's either the item, the initial amount, or the interest earned. Okay, so we're gonna just show you uh, different examples. To, to, to as to how this can be used. Okay, so for example, you there's a bank. Now this bank gives a one percent, one percent per annum interest rate uh, for five thousand dollar deposited. So the question is, how much money will there be in the bank after a period of one year? So let's use the TIP first. What we want to do is we want to find the amount of interest earned. Okay, so to do that. The total amount that deposits that's being deposited is five thousand dollars, and the percentage is actually one percent. So I want to find one percent of five thousand. What do we do? So according to the TIP triangle, you want to find the, 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 the this amount. You have to take the total, multiply with the percentage. So what it looks like is this: five thousand dollars times percentage is one percent. One percent is one over. A hundred, and when you do that, you cancel the two zero. You get fifty dollars. So, uh, what we what happens is we have found the interest is fifty dollars. But the question is, how much money is in the bank one year later? So you got to take this. You add with the five thousand dollars, and we get total of five thousand and fifty dollars. Okay. So the use of TIP it can be in several ways. You can either find the item initial or the interest. That's what the I stands for. Or if they give you the item, you know, and then uh, they give you the percentage, you can also find the total. Or if they give you the item, you know, divided by total times 100, you can also find the percentage. Okay, so that is the use of uh, TIP triangle to find percentage questions. Okay? <laughs> Last but not least, for percentages, we have the infamous and the most difficult and the one with the most confusion that's called the change of base. So what do we mean by change of base? Now a lot of students are always confused when we change the base. That means, okay, simply put, what does change of base mean? It simply means that uh, the 100% is referring to different things. Okay, so there are several other terms that teachers use. It can be a new 100% or that hundred percent is simply referring to something else. Okay, we call it change of base here because base is like over one hundred percent. It doesn't matter what uh, they call it or they can call it some other thing. But the idea is that the hundred percent is not that hundred percent anymore. It's referring to something else. Okay, so the best way to demonstrate to you is to show you one particular question so you know what we're talking about. So the question that we are talking about or we're going to use is this particular question. Uh, which is which has, which has got to do with money okay so let me just uh, talk about this question so in this one uh, so did he save sixty dollars in February so in February in February she saved sixty dollars and this amount was a 20% increase from what she saved in January so this amount is a 20% increase uh, from what she saved in January but at the same time uh, the amount she saved in March was a 15% decrease from what she saved in February. Right? So what was the total amount that she saved throughout the whole period? So from here, we can see that uh, clearly there are two different 100% bases that's been changed. For example, uh, in the first sentence, this amount of $60 uh, was a 20% increase from what she saved in January. That means if January is 100%, this is actually 120%. So if I want to find what is in January, I gotta take $60 divided by 120% and times 100%, which is referring to January. Okay, so one of the 100% is referring to January. Get that? Okay, now the second part says that the amount she saved in March was a 15% decrease from February. So now I have a new 100%. The new 100% is actually referring to 
$60. Remember just now this was 120%, now it's 100%. Okay, so to find the amount uh, that is in that is in uh, March, you gotta take this as the new 100%. And thereby what we have done is we had a change of base. The 100% at first was referring to this, and then after uh, the second part of the question, the 100% is actually referring to this. Understand what I'm talking about? Okay, so if you don't understand, it's fine. Uh, go and take a look at that particular question. You got a solution over there. Just bear in mind, the idea is that the base has changed. The uh, there is a new hundred percent. The hundred percent is referring to something else. Okay, take a look at the solution and see if you are okay with this. Okay, can. Okay, so this is the solution video for the. Uh, uh, this is a change of base, that particular question with regards to the, uh, you know, there are three months and then there's a the different percentage. Let me just explain how it works here. So for February, it was $60 and we, we, we were told that this is a 120% increase from January. So I need to find out what is the amount of money in January. Now the amount of money here is actually the 100%. Now since this is 120% uh, and I want to find 100%, Okay, for here, what I do is I take $60, I uh, multiply it with uh, 100 over 120, okay? Uh, what this shows is that I take $60 divided by 120 and then I multiply by 100%. I will get uh, $50. So the amount in January is actually $50. Okay, so that's the first part of the question. Now, the second part of the question says that uh, in March, it was a 15% decrease. So this is a 15% decrease from here. So I have a new 100%. I cannot take this at 150% anymore. Okay, so this has to be 100%. So let me just finish off. So can you see, at first this was 100%. Uh, now, this 60 becomes the 100%. Okay, and I need to find the amount that she saved in March. What I know is that it is a 15% off. From here, that means here is 85%. Okay, so to find the amount of money here, I just take 85 divided by 100 okay, times 60. Okay, using my calculation, I'll get $51. So this is $51. Okay, and the final amount, uh, I mean the final question is, what is the total amount saved? So you just take uh, all of them and add them together. So it's uh, 50 plus 60 plus 51 you get 161 dollars saved okay that's it